Well, now I'm joined by Keith Fraser, founder of the Israel Solidarity Movement. Good afternoon, Keith. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me, JJ. So how do you feel about Cameron coming out and saying, issuing this warning that our support is not unconditional to Israel? Well, first of all, what kind of friendship is unconditional, JJ? Is there one? Maybe the US and, and, and our great country here. But in all seriousness, the only unconditional relationship anyone could ever have is with their dog. So um, <laughs> nothing is unconditional. What I would say, though, is that David Cameron, who was the elected leader of this country, uh, this great British democracy we have, would be well served to support Israel, which is the only democracy free country in a region of tyranny over there in the Middle East. So I think it's in his interest, and particularly, JJ, in what uh, we saw, I think, yesterday in this very alarming poll, which said that 75% of British Muslims believe, don't, don't actually believe that Hamas committed rape, murder, and atrocities on the 7th of October. And in fact, 32% said they want to live under Sharia law. Well, if that is the case, I think we have a situation here where not only Jews are under threat, but our whole liberal free society is under threat. And we need to stick and we need to stick firmly behind our Western free allies, including the state of Israel. Well, look, Keith, anyone who wants to live under Sharia law is free to do so. I would suggest they go to their nearest uh, Muslim country and they can live there happily. I will happily send them off on planes to do that. But with nearly 200 other aid workers killed in Israeli strikes. Can you understand why some people in, in, in the cabinet may have reservations about our continued support and selling of arms to Israel? And not really, no, because while this is a tragedy, a tra tragedy of war, or that Israel didn't want, of course, and, you know, in, in operations under David Cameron's prime ministership in Libya, for example, uh, there were... A, a number of cases of friendly fire that also killed aid workers. The US, our biggest ally in uh, in their operations in, in places like Afghanistan and Iraq, have under friendly fire, sadly, um, killed aid workers. Now, I'm not I'm not condoning the, you know, the killing of any innocent civilians. Unfortunately, it's a tragedy of war and it's the collateral damage we have in a very, very, very difficult war, and some would say perhaps the most difficult war in history that Israel is undertaking against a terrorist enclave where, you know, 500 kilometers of terror tunnels paid for by you and me, by the way, JJ, uh, this is this is not an ordinary war. And and we have also, I, I heard him mentioned today on, on your channel, John Spencer, who is the world's leading expert on urban warfare and has been in Gaza, has himself said that Israel has gone beyond any other army in the history of warfare to protect civilians. What more can it do while at the same time it is fighting a radical Islamic um, ideology and regime that not only wants Jews dead the world over, it wants Christians dead. Mahmoud al-Zahar, let me tell you, one of the Hamas leaders shortly after the 7th of October said that Jews and Christians um, will be under our law. The Jews and Christians of the whole planet. This is a war, unfortunately, against a radical ideology. And if we don't win it, our own freedoms here in the UK are also going to be under threat. Keith, Britain sells arms to China. And we keep hearing about China being this big, bad country, a bad government. They're stealing our data. We also sell arms to Saudi Arabia, who bomb Yemen. We also sell arms to 22 countries, which our own government has, of those 22 countries, we have them on uh, human rights watch lists. But there's no cries from anyone saying, let's stop selling arms to China, let's stop selling arms to Saudi Arabia, let's stop selling arms to 22 countries who are on a human rights list. Why do you think they are attacking Israel now? Look, I don't like to cry anti-Semitism all the time. But, you know, when you single out one country over and above all the others, there's got to be an ulterior motive. And, and in actual fact, JJ, this country is a net beneficiary of Israeli arms exports and imports. We import a lot more Israeli arms than we export to Israel. 
Israel's defense forces works very closely with our own in counterterrorism uh, situations to protect our citizens here from the same threat that they are experienced in. And I'll tell you something else. Where was the call for the banning of funding that was going to the Gaza Strip, which was funding uh, UNRWA, who uh, many of their workers were involved in the atrocities of, of the 7th of October? Where was the where was the, with the condemnation of the fact that all the funds that we've been sending to that enclave over all these years have ended up in uh, Ishmael Haniyeh's uh, hotel suite in Qatar, in his presidential suite in Qatar, and in 500 kilometers of terror tunnels. By the way, terror tunnels for the for the Hamas murderers, not to protect the people, because not one bomb shelter has ever been built in the Gaza Strip. That is a fact. So, Keith, if Hamas really cared about their people, they would release hostages and they would stop hiding amongst civilians. But as it stands currently, would you support a ceasefire? The ceasefire, I don't uh, support a ceasefire in the one that the, 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 you know, all the people marching on the streets say ceasefire, because a ceasefire would only be a temporary pause anyway, whether it be a year down the line when Hamas try and attack again. I support a ceasefire if Hamas released the hostages and put down their weapons and say enough is enough. Other than that, Israel's got to go in, finish the job that they started and rid the region of this evil, radical Islamist ideology and military. Now, Netanyahu has said, as, as you've just said, he wants to rid um, Gaza completely of Hamas. But is that really possible? Can you get rid of an ideology? And for every, every civilian who dies, every child that's orphaned, are we not making more terrorists? The ideology was in place before the 7th of October, as you can see. The ideology caused the 7th of October. People celebrating, people recording it on their GoPros and phoning home, saying Allah Akbar to their family, saying, look how many Jews I've killed in cold blood. These people are uh, unfortunately radicalised from the moment they leave the womb. It is very sad. Go and look at it's tons of stuff online about Palestinian television and about the messages that they give to youngsters, encouraging them when they get older to become Shaheed, meaning martyrs. The only way forward, I'm afraid, JJ, is, is the de-radicalisation. You can't get rid of Hamas ideology. You can get rid of their military capability, their tunnels, etc. But the only way to handle this going forward is the de-radicalisation, not only of the Palestinians in Gaza, but of the Israel. Islamist ideology, including in this country here. OK, well, Keith Fraser, thank you very much for your time. And by the way, our friendship is unconditional.